Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. Have you ever seen a red band in the sky and wondered what it was? Well, I did, and I had to find out myself. So let me tell you what an SAR is. October 7th, 2024, I went outside to watch the Draconid Meteor Shower, which peaks every October between October 1st and October 10th. That evening, NOAA had also predicted a G2 geomagnetic storm from an X9.0 class solar flare, the most powerful flares our sun can produce on October 3rd, 2024. But you can never be sure whether these predictions will actually materialize into a Northern Lights display. So I was looking for meteors in the direction of Draco the Dragon, the radiant for this meteor shower, which is also in the northern part of the sky, where Northern Lights usually appear, in the Northern Hemisphere anyway. I saw a couple of nice meteors, and after a while, the sky suddenly brightened significantly around the Big Dipper, and I knew that the northern lights were coming. Sure enough, there was a dramatic Aurora Borealis display that lasted for hours. I had two cameras pointed north to capture the Aurora display, but then I faced east, and to my amazement, over my house was a bright red arc of light that resembled the California Nebula, <laughs> magnified about 100,000 times. It didn't look like a normal auroral display, and it just parked there over the house for hours. I got another camera out, and I pointed it over the house to capture whatever this red thing was, because number one, it was red, and the human eye is not very sensitive to red wavelengths. And to even see red in the sky is rare. And number two, red aurorae are rare. They occur above 186 miles above the Earth's surface. So I knew it was something special and not anything I had ever seen before. After a couple of hours, this giant California nebula thing <laughs> faded away and I continued enjoying the aurora display and the meteor shower. It was only later that I found out that the red band over the house was not the same thing as the Aurora Borealis that I had been watching. Instead, it was something called SAR, Stable Aurora Red Arc. I'm not sure why it's not called SARA, S-A-R-A. SARs were first observed and named in the 1950s when the space age was just taken off. But the name is misleading because they are not stable and they are not aurorae, although they are arcs. Aurorae occur when charged particles from the solar wind are sent down to the Earth from the Earth's magnetosphere and into the ionosphere, whereas SARs occur when heat energy escapes from the Earth's ring current. And if you have never heard of the Earth's ring current, <laughs> neither had I until today. And I had to do a lot of research to find out what this thing was that I had seen in the sky. In addition to a magnetosphere, the Earth has a ring current that consists of high energy protons carrying substantial electrical current encircling the Earth. During geomagnetic storms like we have been having during this period of solar maximum, low energy protons enter the near-Earth system, enhancing the ring current, according to NASA. And this is why you see SARs in conjunction with geomagnetic storms. But they're different. SARs occur when heat energy leaks into the Earth's atmosphere from the ring current. They're among the reddest things in the sky from atomic oxygen in the upper atmosphere. The SAR that I saw on October 7th, 2024 was visible to the naked eye and it was a deep red, redder than anything I had ever seen in the sky. You never know what you'll see when you go outside and enjoy the night sky. 
And until today, I had never heard of SARs or the ring current. And I'm just excited to share with you what I saw and what I learned. So here's my time lapse of an SAR, and it looked exactly like this to my naked eye. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see y'all soon. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky and look for an SAR. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.